Good morning world, this is Pastor John Fisherman Cranwell with uh, my brother Chris here, the greatest videoer in the Philippines. <laughs> we are here in the gym on the top of the um, uh, GRV TV broadcasting station, looking right over all of Manila. You want to show them uh, the city of Manila? Chris, just point it out the window there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, we are on top of the tall building here in Munoz. Okay. And right around here. And this, we are inside the gym. Uh, my friend, the most handsome Aussie man. <laughs> <laughs> he is from Australia. <laughs> okay, brother. Okay. The hippie man and the surf man. Yeah. Okay, so let's have a look. There's a verse I meant to bring up on the last session, and then I want to, I want to deal with the most comforting words. But there's a, there's a scripture in the book of Ezekiel that are very sad. And uh, it's in Ezekiel chapter 3, starts at verse 16, and it's, it's about a watchman for Israel. After seven days the Lord gave me, that's Jeremiah, a message. He said, Son of man, I've appointed you as a watchman for Israel. Whenever you receive a message from me, warn people immediately. Now the prophets warn people. They prophesied into the future. Okay. And so here... He says, if I warn the wicked, saying, you are under the penalty of death, but you fail to deliver the warning, you'll die in their sins, and I will hold you responsible for their deaths. If you warn them, and they refuse to repent, and give on, keep on sinning, and will die in their sins, but you will have saved yourself because you obeyed me. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that Jeremiah the prophet is warning us that if we do not tell others the good news of the gospel, then their blood is on our hands. God holds us personally responsible for others being saved. He has given us the ministry of reconciliation, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse uh, let me see, 18 and 19. He's made us in his ambassadors in verse 20. And so if we're not doing the work of an ambassador, and we're not reconciling people to God, not bringing them to God, then the lost people that we should have told, their blood is on our hands and God holds you and I responsible for them. Hmm, very sad words. So let's not have sad words spoken over us, let's have glad words spoken over us. Well done, good and faithful servant. For the amount of people we've gone out of the way, we've walked out of the door of our house, we've walked out of the door of our, our where we, we work at, at our job, and our lunch hour, we've gone down the street and we've focused on the love of Christ, sharing that with people. We go out of our way to do this. We go out of our house. If we're a sportsman, we share with our, with the sports people that we're involved with. Wherever we go, whatever circle we're in, we can share the gospel. And if we're not into anything, then just go out. If you don't have any hobbies or sports, just go out and share the gospel. That's better than any hobby in any sport you could ever do. It's a very serious thing to lead somebody to Christ. In God's economy, that's the greatest thing you could ever do for a lost soul, is to lead them to Jesus Christ. And so don't have the their blood on your hands, my brother, my sister. Make sure that you please God and not please the devil. You please God by going out, fulfilling your, your ministry of reconciliation, the God-given ministry of reconciliation, to reconcile, to bring people to God. So from sad to glad. Okay, so now let's deal with some scriptures from the Word of God. Comforting words. Words of comfort. We've had the saddest words. They're the worst words we've ever, ever spoken. So let's have a look at some glad words, shall we? Um, Psalm 34. Let's have a look. Psalm 34 and verse 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. 
Mm. So maybe right now, believer, you're broken hearted. A loved one has died or left you. You're disillusioned, you're frustrated, you're hurting, your heart is broken. And guess what? I've got good news for you. Because the Bible says here, it says the Lord is close to you who are broken heart. He's so close to you, he'll never leave you nor forget you. He sticks closer than the brother. He's right there for you. He will help you get through your broken heartedness. He will mend your broken heart. Don't ask me how, but he will. So just lean on him right now. You're broken hearted. You're in your worst place in your life. You're in the darkest place of your life. You don't want to live any longer. There's still more life. You can be reconciled. You can find another. But when death comes, those who die, our loved ones, who die in Christ go to heaven. Those who die without Christ don't go to heaven. They go to hell. So that's very sad for them and very sad for you. But God's ways is higher than theirs. So just lean on God right now. And if you're having a hard time leaning on God, go to your pastor. Go to your best friend. Somebody you can relate to. Somebody that, that has uh, knowledge, who's been through a hard time too. Go to them. Talk to them. Just load off onto them. And, uh, and God will comfort you. Because he will rescue those whose spirits are crushed. You'll, crush, you'll have a crushed spirit now. It's a terrible place to be. But he's there for you. He'll never let you down. Just go to him. Go to your pastor. Go to a friend. And um, make sure that you feel better afterwards. Because you will. So let's have a look now at Psalm um, 103. And verse 13. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. For he knows how weak we are. He remembers we're just dust. Wow, the Lord is like a father to his children. Fathers, you love your children. You do anything for them. You die in their place if, if that was the case and need to be. You're there for them, and you meet every need that you can possibly. So God is even a bigger father than that. He's a father to you. He's your heavenly father, the one who cares and loves and has compassion for you. And he will help you go through the hard time you're going through. Because he's tender and passionate. Okay? So remember, God will never leave you nor forsake you there for you. He will help you and carry you through. You know the, the, the footsteps in the sand. He's carrying you right now. No, he hasn't left you. He hasn't said, oh no, he's been too bad, too naughty. He hasn't been doing the right thing all the time. No, 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 no. He's there for you. He's there for you. Remember, he is there for you. So rely upon him to help you through this time of sadness. Let's go to Isaiah now, shall we? The book of Isaiah. And let's have a look at the um, 41st chapter and verse 10. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Do, do not be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. You know, this word, do not fear, is mentioned in the Bible 365 days. So every day you can depend on God saying to you, do not fear for I am with you. That's one for every day of the year. Do not fear. For well, God does not give us a spirit of fear or timidity, but power, love, and a sound mind. So, why are you fearing? Oh, you said that's easy for me to say. Yes, I've had fears for sure. And you know what happens when we worry about certain things? 
the fears we have, they never happen. And we waste all that time worrying and depressed and worrying and we can't focus on anything properly. We forget things and do things wrong and we just get so upset, we're so worried, then afterwards it doesn't happen. Because God is there for you, He will take you through that time of despair. So why do we fear? Why do we fear, Chris? Why do we fear when God says, don't fear for I'm with you? So what can go, what can go really so bad when God is with us? And the things we fear the most, they never happen. Well, I should say hardly ever happen. <laughs> Maybe that's more realistic. But normally, the things that we fear the most don't happen. So what's the use of fearing? So he says, do, that's why he says, do not fear, for I am with you. You see, when you're born again, following Jesus Christ faithfully, then you're on the winning side. You can't lose. No matter what happens to you through life, no matter what hard times you go through, you can't lose, you're a winner. Because you're on the winning side. You've got Heavenly Father who cares for you and looks after you and helps you get through those hard times. So, do not fear. And I say that to myself right now. I have a fear of some certain thing, but as I said, I, I eat my own words. It'll probably never happen. So it'll be just a waste of time me worrying about it. <laughs> okay? Because God is with me. He will not let you down. He will never let you down. We let him down sometimes, but he won't let us down. Okay? So let's go um, back into Psalms now again. And we'll have a look at Psalm 3. And verse 3. But you, O Lord, are a shield around me. You're my glory, the one who holds my head high. You are a shield to me. A shield protects us. The Lord God, our protector. He will protect you from the arrows, from the darts of the enemy. From the spear of the enemy. He will protect you. The shield, you have a look at the policeman. They wear these bulletproof shields. They have these shields um, and they go in and break into homes where there's heavy ammunition uh, hitting them. They go in with a shield to protect them. Well, God will protect you as you go through the worries and problems of life. He will protect you and he will shield you from so you won't get hurt. You won't get harmed. So remember... God will always be your shield, my brother, my sister. And if you're not saved, you're not born again, then you need to have a shield to protect you from the wicked one, from the enemy, to protect you from your religion, the evils of your religion, of your idolatry, the evils of your sin, those things that take you down instead of taking you up. You need to get saved, repent from your sins, convert your religion, uh, turn away from your unbelief if you're an atheist and then God will shield you protect you you need the protection of God you can't make it properly on this earth without God being your shield you cannot live properly without God God has designed us to have or created us to have a personal relationship with him he wants to be your shield today okay Will you make him your shield today? Okay. So let's have a now look at Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, and see what that's got to say about nice words. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5 and 6. Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to all who come to him for protection. Here we see... God as your shield. God is your protector. God will protect you and shield you from harm. Is this true? Yes. It says here, Proverbs 30 verse 5, every word of God proves true. He's proven to be true. He's never let us down. He'll never let you down. And he'll do things his way because his ways are much better than ours. 
His ways are much better than ours. Remember that. Okay. Now let's go into the um, New Testament and let's have a look in the book of First Peter. First Peter, comforting words. Amen. First Peter, chapter five and verse seven. Give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares about you. Chris, give all your worries to Him. Amen. All your worries to Him. Give them all to Him. Yeah, we get to that place. Did you wonder your worries? Yes. Give all your worries and cares to Him. Why? Because He cares for you. Okay. Now, one last one. And that is a very popular one. And when I can get to it, I want to read it exactly out to you. And it's found in Matthew 11:28. You already know what I'm going to say, don't you? Matthew 11:28. Come to me, Jesus says, all of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Come to me, yes. and I will give you rest. Take so, my yoke upon you, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Christ wants to swap your heavy burden with his light burden. And he says to you now, Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You've been struggling with your life. You've been struggling with every area of your life. Your finances, your family, your loved ones, your work. You're struggling at the moment, and you're despaired and don't know which way to go. There's only one way to go. From the bottom, you go up. That's the only way to go. So it's time for you now to come to Jesus. Come to him now. You're weary and heavy laden. He wants to give you rest. So what do you do? You confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised from the dead. You shall be saved. You need to be saved right now. You've been rejecting the word of God. You've been rejecting the gospel message. Maybe you're an atheist and you don't believe in this. But now you're in a place in life where you've never been before and you don't know what to do. You've always had all the answers, so you've thought. But right now you have no answer and no solution to your problem. Well, I tell you what, God has. And that is come to Him. Although you're weary and heavy laden, and He'll give you rest. So come to Him now by confessing with your mouth Jesus the Lord and believing in your heart that God raised from the dead so that you can be saved. You need to be saved. You need to go to heaven. You don't want to go to hell. It is a real place. Heaven is a real place. And you need to get to heaven. You don't want to go to hell because you, re you will regret the day you were even born. Come to him right now, the weary and heavy laden. Pray with me this prayer, please. This is a promise you make to God. Dear God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I'm sorry for sinning against you. Holy God, but I believe that Jesus Christ did die on the cross and he did rise again on the third day for all my sins. I repent for my sins right now and I willingly turn away from my religion and my atheism and agnosticism, my unbelief. To follow only you, my Lord Jesus, I promise you this for the rest of my life. Thank you, my Lord, for forgiving my sins and saving me from hell. Please make me the person you want me to be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well done. You made the best choice of your life today. You may have gone through many tests in university, graduation, or whatever you might be in your school, all your schooling years, and, and, and even to uh, get a job, you may have to have done tests and exams. You passed them all. Good on you. But this is the most important test you passed today. Because in the Bible it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, test yourselves, examine yourselves, or do you not know yourself that Jesus Christ is in you? If not, you fail the test. When you fail the test of life, you're disqualified from heaven. So now you've just passed the most important test of your life. Christ is in you, you're in Christ. Okay? You can find that in the Bible. 
So now what do you do now? Start doing the things that please God because all your life you've done everything that pleased the devil. There's nothing you've ever done before that's pleased God. Nothing you can do that outside of coming to him and repenting and converting. There's nothing you can do to please him. So now you've started to do that. So what do you do? You read your Bible, you talk to him the Bible way. You point others to Jesus. You go to a born-again church and grow the things of God. So start by reading your Bible in the Gospel of John and the New Testament. So only read one chapter a day. It takes three to four minutes. It cleanses you and God speaks to you. Then after three months, try reading two chapters. Uh, one in the Old Testament, one in the New, to give you a balanced spiritual diet. And then when you finish doing that, then read as many chapters as you like. If you, well, after a year, if you read four chapters a day, in one year you read the Old Testament once and the New Testament twice. I did that myself and uh, did that for the first year and the second year. I read the Old Testament twice and the New Testament four times and I had one month left over. So it's doable, okay? It's, it's not the mission of impossible, it's the mission of possible. And there's not a mission of impossible to lift up your hands. Stop doing this if you were doing this in your old religion. Start lifting up your hands to a holy God and worshiping and serving Him, talking to Him. Close your door, put on some worship music and just worship Him. In spirit and in truth, for such worshipers, He's looking for, He's found another one in you and others. Um, now, the next one is, it's not mission impossible to go out and share the gospel with others. You've got people where you work, at your school, uh, in, in your community, wherever you go, shopping, um, no matter where you go, there's people, and all you do is tell them about Jesus. Lead them to Christ if you can. Tell them, just start to tell them about the Bible of Jesus, the real God of the Bible, and point them the way to heaven through Jesus Christ. John 14, 6. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So just point them to Jesus. God bless you. A whole county has us. Mabuti, Mabuti, Pastor John Cromwell, Australiano, GRV TV. Okay, Lan? I don't Yeah, yeah. So, some lovely Filipino people here. They're very friendly people in the Philippines. So now you've made the best choice of your life. Welcome to God's forever family. You do your best with God's help. Read the Bible, talk to God the Bible way, point others to Jesus, and go to a born-again church and grow and grow in the things of the God of the Bible. God bless you real good. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you too, Chris. Hallelujah, brother. See you next time, brother. Hey, brother. How are okay, you, brother? Okay, <laughs> Okay, bro. <laughs> That's speaking in Tagalog. Thanks, brother. Well, I'm going to